Good morning, good afternoon. Brother Jim reporting here at End Times Prophecy News. It today is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo Day. Happy Independence for Mexico, their celebration. Uh, so today's report is going to be based on, it's going to be called Democrats have gone crazy. They sure have. That's what it's called. That's what it's all about. Democrats have gone crazy as they continue to kill people with a fake COVID-19 death and mortality rates that they're added to pad the system and to throw COVID-19 patients into nursing homes and wrongfully uh, to spread it to the elderly citizens to kill them, in, especially in New York. In all the Democrat states, everything is a curse through this. They're using this pandemic to destroy America, to destroy their state. They've gone crazy. Democrats have gone crazy. This just came in yesterday at the after I made my report a tearful nurse blows whistle on New York hospitals murdering COVID patients with complete medical mismanagement if it ain't taking the COVID patients into the nursing homes the elderly who are highly susceptible to COVID-19 with underlying conditions of which are like 99 percent it's not just age folks but you have to have underlying diabetes and all kinds of other other underlying health issues but on top of that once they get them there they make sure they die and murder them this is really horrific the time of sorrows is here it's just beginning a Nevada nurse who traveled to New York to help treat COVID-19 patients has posted a tearful Facebook Live video claiming that patients are not dying from the virus but are being murdered by gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. And I will also announce to you today that YouTube has now demonetized me 100%. You'll never see a commercial on me on my channel. And furthermore, this is my third channel and I'm highly blocked and so you can expect they're gonna take down this channel and if you haven't already subscribed to my bit shoot or and I can't even go back to Brighteon because uh, there's a problem there with just signing in I can't get them to uh, my old email has been deleted so I can't even sign in there so so now all I have is what's remaining left on YouTube as a voice for you and all I have and then there is no Brighteon channel that I can post now on all I have is the megaphone link down below in the description box you'll see the link and also that's the radio broadcast uh, on the internet and then you have BitChute that's it and when YouTube cancels my channel and you can bet the day is coming once again for the third time that will be gone too. So I just want you to know that I am supported here by a very small group of people financially, very small, which can be counted on my hands. I come back to make videos because of them. Even though my mind and soul is vexed by the wickedness I see happening throughout this world and in high places. The New World Order beast system has already taken most of your First Amendment right to free speech away. And more Democrats are calling for more censorship on all of the big tech platforms. I know when I am not wanted by the world and I also know by these things that have come to pass that my redemption draweth nigh. That and to be called up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with him. No more tears, no more pain. Such a wonderful time it shall be. So back to the story. Nicole Sirotek, a nurse from Elko, Nevada, was assigned to two different hospitals in New York City. I'm literally telling you that they are murdering these people, Sirotek says in the terrifying video. 
The video begins with Sirtec explaining that every time she attempts to advocate on behalf of one of her patients, management takes them away and reassigns her to another unit. She said that this happened at both of the hospitals she has worked at in the city. Quote, I legitimately don't even know what to do anymore. Even advocacy groups don't give a SHIT about these people. She said black lives don't matter here. I know not everybody is going to live. I'm not that effing green or ignorant, she says, or bright eyed and bushy tailed to think that okay. I know we're going to have a SHIT ton of people die, but these people aren't dying from COVID. Not only that, but when these people die, they're all the nurses are are honored by the head nurses or the head of that floor as you've done a great job. Thanks for helping. Serotech then gave several specific examples, several uh, patients who have died from medical negligence, including a resident nurse killing a patient by using a defibrillator on him when he had a pulse and it wasn't necessary. When she ran out of the room to get help stopping him from doing it, the director of nursing just shook her, their head at her. The patient ultimately died within minutes, but not from COVID. In another example, she said that a patient was given the wrong type of insulin. Even more alarmingly, she said that the hospital was refusing to give blood transfusions to patients who were low on blood unless they have internal bleeding. Without proper blood flow, she explained, the ventilators will not do anything to help them. She said that this is a common problem for patients with the virus. Nobody is listening. They don't care what is happening to these people. They don't. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. Oh, but... The video has been taken down from big tech, but someone else made a copy of it. You can listen, maybe it works here. Serotech explained that we're not even treating the COVID guys for real, we're not treating the COVID. She said that the bare minimum is being done to keep them alive, but not to help them get better at all. This has led to a 100% mortality rate in her unit, she explains. Are you getting the picture, folks? And this is what's going on in de Blasio's neighborhood. The Big Apple. House Republicans send letter to Ray demanding all documents on operation against Flynn, provide FBI's Bill Priestap and Joe Pienka for interviews. Representative Jim Jordan and Mike Johnson on Monday sent a letter to FBI Director Ray demanding all documents on the operation against General Flynn. The Republican lawmakers are also seeking interviews with FBI Special Agent Joe Pienka and former Assistant Director of the FBI Counterintelligence Division, Bill Priestep. They all need to be taken to Gitmo and shot in the back of the head. The American people continue to learn troubling details about the politicization and misconduct at the highest levels of the FBI during the Obama-Biden administration. Jordan and Johnson wrote, even more concerning, we continue to learn these new details from litigation and investigations, not from you. It is well past time that you show the leadership necessary to bring the FBI past abuses of the Obama-Biden era. Produce all documents and communi communications between or among the FBI and other executive branch agencies, including but not limited to the executive office of the president. Well, even if that happens, which Ray is continuing to block, how much you want to bet there is going to be hardly any justice? Why? Because the beast system is God's will, folks. I've said this over and over, Donald Trump, Cyrus is going to bless this nation and help the world out. He is God's servant. Isaiah 45, one through five, talk, four actually talks about that. But you can't, exp but at the same time, God is rising the beast system. He is giving power unto the revealing of the Antichrist very soon. Updated, Dr. Fossey likely broke U.S. law when he funded Wuhan lab to continue coronavirus projects that were banned in U.S. in 2014. Oh, but Donald Trump stopped funding the Wuhan lab. Mm-hmm. 
A month ago, we reported that Chinese doctor Shi Zheng Li was part of a team working on a coronavirus project jointly with U.S. doctors in 2014 before it was shut down by the DHS for being too risky. After the U.S. research project was shut down, Dr. Shi continued her coronavirus research in Wuhan, China. I'm a good citizen of the CCP. I make sure lots of people die. I mean, look at this picture of her, her head and her little tiny body. What's going on there? <laughs> Pardon me. Very strange, huh? So anyway, let's move on. It's official. The 2020 presidential election is now only a half a year away. Will liberal tears flow again? Yes, indeed they will. And I've said this over and over. Cyrus will be re-elected. Why? Because he's going to continue to bless this nation, as it says for the rapture at the last trump. In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, that is a time stamp. Very simple. If I say at, at, at 12 o'clock, what am I telling you? A time stamp, right? And so at the last trump means... Cyrus. It means Donald Trump. It means he is taking the wealth out of the world, the wicked people, and giving it back to the good people, the poor people, especially of this nation. So Trump will continue to stay here until the rapture. Now, if the rapture happens, the second part of the prophecy is, is that Donald Trump is going to make a decree to build the third temple. And why do I keep saying this? It's not because Donald Trump is the false prophet. It's not because he's betrayed us. It's because it is God letting you know that I'm the one who brings the wrath of God upon the face of the earth. I will let you, I am the one who calls my bride up. I am the one who lets the revealing of the whole, the revealing of the Antichrist happen as 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 and 7. The Holy Spirit will restrain the revealing of the Antichrist. It is all about God and his sovereign reign to do all these things. To divide the sheep from the goats. So that's what you have here. It's not that he's the false prophet. No, the false prophet is the Pope. And he comes before the son of perdition, just like John the Baptist was the final prophet who came before and prepared the way of our Lord. But you are not baptized by John the Baptist. If you've been dunked in water, then you're ignorant that you should be baptized in fire, which is not only the truth, as Romans 6 t tells you, Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7, but it is another medium, and that, sp that medium of fire instead of water is a spiritual understanding. And it means to burn the wickedness out of you. The fire burns the wickedness, which is your decision to turn from sin. That is your baptism. It's an every day, every minute baptism. That's right. It's your liberty in Christ to be baptized. It's official. The 2020 presidential election is now a half a year away. In 2016, Americans came in waves to elect God Emperor Donald Trump. Trump won more delegates during the 2016 primaries than any other Republican candidate and a higher percentage of delegates than any Republican or Democrat candidate in the race of 2016. It was also the highest percentage of delegates compared to what was needed at 125% during the primaries. Oh no, it was a fix. Donald Trump is a globalist and he's leading us into destruction, right? And you listen to state-run propaganda if you believe that. As a result, Trump received more votes than any candidate in Republican history, but no, he won the popular vote or, or Hillary won the popular vote, so therefore it's all a fraud. 
right, we won't, we won't, we won't consider the mail-in fake ballots or the harvest, uh, har the uh, 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 what do you call it, har vote harvesting they do, and all the other fraud. No, no, no. It's funny. Yesterday, Stacey Abrams, the failed nothing burger sodomite out of Georgia, said voter fraud is as far as uh, I forgot what she compared it to, it, but it could never happen. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She compared it to something that's just impossible, never would happen, you know. Anyway, good news. There will be plenty of liberal tears in, in this 2020 election. Oh, yes. They tried to impeach him twice. They tried to assassinate him several times. Oh, you don't hear that on the state-run propaganda, do you? I know. Why do Democrat states have the highest number of coronavirus deaths? Why are devils, why are the Democrats gone crazy? Same reason. Why does New York City have thousands of deaths to Seoul, South Korea's two deaths? Well, we already know that by the opening story, don't we? We already know that by this opening story. They are murdering people. Very sad. According to CDC's data released on May 4th, 2020, more than half of all deaths related to the coronavirus are in the small area of New York City, New York State, and New Jersey. Well, they took a bite of the apple. And the fall of mankind happened in the Garden of Eden when they took a bite of the apple. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just a conspiracy theory that Apple computers have the sign of an apple bitten into, right? That's just a conspiracy theory. You see, what it means is that we've taken, if you don't understand what that meaning means, that's Genesis 3. That's right. 22. Why do you think the skull and crossbones has the number 322? Same reason, Genesis 3, 22. Read it and weep. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. What? Did God just say that man has become like to, unto God? You got it. This is what they believe. When they took a bite, Adam and Eve took a bite of the knowledge of good and evil, that they have now become little gods. Why do you think Joyce Meyer and Kenneth Copeland both said, we are little gods and you are the puppets with her gold toilet. So, and then it says, but if you read the rest of the scripture, you'll know the truth of it. To know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Well, you'll see that the tree of life in, is in a new heaven and new earth at the end after, at the end of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, and it's in the middle of the, of the, um, of the throne of God. It is the manna from heaven of eternal life, you see. You see, Adam and Eve were given every fruit on every tree to live forever on in the Garden of Eden. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, lest he put forth his hand, he's not, what happened? Well, he was drove out by cherubims with a flaming sword out of the Garden of Eden. So they couldn't take the tree of life, all the other trees in the garden, you see? Because now, he already told them that you're going to die the day you take that bite. And they did surely die that day. Because the day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and Adam and Eve died in less than a thousand years, according to man years. Second Peter 3, uh, I think it's verse 8, yes. So, 
You see, that's what it really means. But you see, the devils in high places, they only realize one thing on the verse. They only take that part of it. They take away from the word of God. And it says in Proverbs by Solomon and John the Apostle in Revelation, anyone who takes away from the word of God, him shall I give the plagues of this book, the wrath of God. You see? So let's go back to our fake COVID deaths. According to the CDC's data release on May 4, 2020, more than half of all deaths related to the coronavirus are in the small area of New York City, New York State, and New Jersey. In addition, when comparing total deaths in New York City to Seoul, South Korea, the numbers are staggering. Seoul has more people in a more densely populated area, but as of a few days ago, it only incurred two deaths to date to New York City's thousands. Thank God I live in Georgia, where Kemp has done the right thing. I don't agree with everything he's done, but he's done the right thing on this one. Oh, here's two white devils. Oh, and speaking of the white devils and the black devils, remember the saying I want to bring up, once you go back black, you never go back. And remember that saying? Well, I want to I want to talk about that a little. Okay? This this one came upon me today. I'm going to ask you some questions about that statement. And and if you don't know what that means, that means that is pertaining to sexual sex. Once you go and have sex with a black man or black woman, you never go back to white people or of no color. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Let's just say that the black man says that to a white girl. We see many relationships like that nowadays, don't we? We see it all over commercials. We see it in the sitcoms everywhere. Black men with white women, right? Okay. So the, the black man says to the white woman, he says, once you go black, you never go back, right? Doesn't that make him to be a hypocrite? Because he's not going to black. He's going to white, right? And other than that, but who's to say, where do you get this crazy idea that the color of skin makes having sex feel better? It's so stupid, isn't it? And so it not only makes him be a hypocrite, but he's a racist against his own black woman, isn't he? Yes. You see, but they just can't figure that one out. Now, let me just say, if I were to say, once you go white, you never go back to black. Well, let's see, I'm, I'm going to go after the black woman, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to tell the black woman, once you go white, you never go back. Once again, I am the hypocrite. I am the degenerate to say such a thing. I am a racist. I am a racist against my own white girls. And I'll, I'll even throw another one in there for you to think about. The typical thing on the news in the last 30, 40 years is about 40 years ago, Hollywood propped up all the idea of the sexual thing of big breasts, right? And now in the last 10 to 20 years, we, they've turned to the propaganda of, of you to be their AI. Just do what we say is that we've turned from large breasts to small breasts and big butts. You ever figure out why they are, are, are everything is all about the rear end now? And there's many reasons. Number one, sodomy is prevalent. We don't care about the wonderful breasts that God created on the woman for the man. We want you to have sodomy. See, if you have sodomy, you don't need a woman, do you? No, you don't. You need an, another man's butt. It's just fine. You see? Sodomy, gays. See? And, and, and on top of that, it's just like 
it, it, you're going in through the outdoor. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's reprobate. But see, that's where they want to lead you. That's why every, all you ever see is these racist for uh, state-run propaganda on TV, in commercials, in sitcoms, in movies. It's always the black people are smart and the white people are dumb. But for some reason, the white people are destroying America in high places. It's still predominantly in high places are white people. Oh, I'm not proud of that at all. I'm not proud of the Democrats. But you see, it has really nothing to do with skin color. Nothing whatsoever. Anyway, let's move on. CDC reports that the total presumed deaths related to coronavirus at 38,000 deaths peaked in early April. So why are we still closed down? Because Cyrus is letting all the governors, the Democrat governors, destroy their states. It's the Great America Awakening. The CDC released updated numbers yesterday that showed that the total presumed deaths related to the, pardon me, coronavirus only stand at 38,000. Their reporting also shows the number of coronavirus deaths peaked in the U.S. month a month ago. We reported so why do we have this? Why are we still closed down? I don't know. Notice that according to the CDC, the coronavirus deaths increased only by only 1,200 cases since May 1st, 2020. The World Ometer website shows 69,921 coronavirus deaths as of the same date, May 4th. These totals are nearly two times the number of deaths reported by the CDC. Well, we got to have another site called the Worldometer to brainwash you with our state-run propaganda, don't we? Note also the number of deaths reported by Worldometer fluctuates in a peculiar manner, indicating the numbers are being misreported. Well, they're already misreported with fake deaths, murdering people on pur purpose at the CDC. And using another clause, if they are presumed to be COVID-19, we will write it on their death certificate and we will pay them 39,000 versus 13,000 if they do that. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Overall, it appears that there is something very wrong with the reporting for coronavirus deaths, you think? I'm well aware of the CDC lag times, but this isn't that, so stop with that excuse for these numbers. Should I go to Hosea 4? For there's nothing but lying and cheating and murder, and blood shall break out with blood. That's all there is now, isn't there? It's just worse and worse day by day. Anti-Kavanaugh crusader Elizabeth Warren is satisfied with Joe Biden's response to Reed's, Tara Reed's allegations of sexual impropriety. But wait a minute, when you're when Kavanaugh was being accused by a fake Democrat, uh, a, a real Democrat who loved Obama and loves abortion and is a professor, you believed every word she said. But in this case, Another Democrat supporting the Biden campaign, Tara Reid, you won't even listen to her. You just take, you don't, you are a total hypocrite, isn't she? Total hypocrite. Democrats gone crazy. Now that Joe Biden has been accused of sexual assault, she is just fine taking Biden's word for it that nothing happened. We don't need to listen to the woman. It just goes to show that the Me Too movement was never really about protecting women. It was about politics and power for the left. Very true. Pocahontas, you've always been a liar. You're a scam. You're a fraud. And you're very wicked. Huh. Look at this one. Don Lemon says Trump is jealous because Michelle Obama is better looking than... Melania, what do you think, folks? 
Don Lemonhead, the sodomite, if you don't know it, says President Trump is jealous because Michelle Obama is better looking than First Lady Melania Trump. Well, I mean, what do you think uh, about, about a man who's been turned into a reprobate, as Romans 1 says, because they didn't believe God. And so God, and they worship the creature more than the creator. So God turns them into a rep reprobate to do that which is unseemly, man lying with man, woman lying with woman, which means sex. What do you think another sodomite like Don Lemon, why he can't figure out that a he, she, Michelle Obama, Don, uh, my, Obama himself, Barack Obama himself called Michelle Michael in front of many generals one day, about six years ago. No, Don, that's not the issue here. You're a reprobate and you can't see the difference between beauty and sick transgenderism. Radical Democrat judge calls on Texans to snitch on restaurants if they have too many people. Martial law. It's not martial law, is it? No, this is what we call, you will all comply and don't you use your brain. Don't you use your brain and realize that you don't have any deaths from, from COVID-19 in your county, like I have right now, and that I refuse to wear a mask So if I have too many people in a restaurant, now I'm supposed to call the CDC and have them arrested? Or the, the, can you believe this? The young Houston area politician is a committed socialist. Last year, she defended her withholding of funds from flood victims based on the color of their skin. It's only gonna get worse, folks. With the Jesuit curriculum in all the colleges, they're producing more of these idiots. She's going after business owners. In April, Hidalgo threatened 180 days in jail for those who oppose her stay at home orders. U.S. carries out massive military operation in Caribbean, confiscates three tons of cocaine from narco dictatorship in Venezuela. A good big win to stop drug addiction nasty stuff coming into America. It's a Trump win-win here. War breaks out to maintain power between drug cartels. Venezuela. The United States Southern Command in Caribbean carried out a very successful military operation recently in waters near Caraco. They seized around three tons of cocaine from Venezuelan operatives. Following the operation, the socialist leader of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, sent a mixed omission from CONUS and the Bolivian Varian National Guard. Without warning, the regime raided properties and made arrest and seized six properties, 11 vehicles, two ships, and money. Good stuff. Good stuff. You knew it was coming into all the nations, especially the U.S. where all the money is. You don't need your kids drugged up or middle-aged or anyone else. We need to stop this corruption. Thank you, Donald Trump. The U.S. Southern Command seized three tons of cocaine from Venezuela and operatives. Praise the Lord for that. And Biden struggles to read off his notes, loses his train of thought. Wait a minute. He can't even speak right. He can't remember. He's, he's in major dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever it is. And now he can't even read. What is wrong with old Joe pedophile, 77-year-old Joe Biden on Monday, struggled to read off his own notes and lost his train of thought. So workers don't quote so don't workers don't have to leave work to get uh to be fired in order to when they get sick to be able to continue to live said biden as he read from prepared notes oh let's listen so workers don't have to leave work to uh, to get uh, uh to be fired uh, in order uh, when they get sick uh, to uh, be able to continue to live uh, uh. 
<laughs> That's the best we got at the Democrat Party. Biden was responding to Al Sharpton's softball questions with prepared answers reading from a teleprompter during a supposed live interview. <laughs> He's funny. And Speaker Nancy Pelosi is the latest Democrat to join, join the long list of communist ASS kissers. Democrats have a long history of coddling the communists. 1970, John and Kerry secretly meets with representatives from the Viet Cong in France while the Vietnam War is raging in Southeast Asia. 1984, former Senator Ted Kennedy asked Russia to intervene in the 1984 election to help defeat President Ronald Reagan. Well, yeah, Ted Kennedy was not a good Kennedy, folks. Uh, lots of corruption on him, but most of the Kennedys were good. In 1985, Bernie Sanders praised communist tyrant Fidel Castro in a 1985 interview. And we have all kinds of millennials and gener Generation X people, young people that love Bernie Sanders today, don't they? 1985, Senator John Kerry and Senator Tom Harkin during the Cold War met with communist radical Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua. Yeah, remember what John Kerry did recently? The Logan Act? Oh, yes. Bernie's, in 1988, Bernie Sanders honeymooned in the Soviet Union in 1988. 2019, Democrat Ilhan Omar defends the brutal Maduro communist regime. 2020, Nancy Pelosi is not interested with finding the origins of the Wuhan virus that, that is decimating the U.S. economy and has killed 60,000 elderly and sickly Americans. No, that's what we want says the Wicked Witch of the West. Nasty Pelosi. Pelosi is playing defense for the Chai Coms. Very true. And that stands for Chinese Communists, if you don't understand that. That term first came out of Infowars Alex Jones. That abbreviation. Uh, we're tired of your lies. Protesters gather outside of Massachusetts State House demanding governor reopen state. But Jake Tapper says, they, don't you realize that most of these people that are exercising their First Amendment are really just neo-Nazis? Yes, that's the, that's the state-run propaganda. The people that want to go back to work and want to make America great again are now called neo-Nazis on state-run propaganda. That'd be CNN, of course sickening. Protesters on Monday gathered outside of the Massachusetts State House demanding the governor reopen the state. Demonstrators were also protesting the authoritarian mass mandate that takes effect on Wednesday, dubbed the Liberty Rally. How dare they, the neo-Nazis. The protest, promoted by conservative radio host Jeffrey Cooner, was planned in the event Republican Governor Charlie Baker didn't reopen businesses on May 4th. Governor Baker extended his state's stay-at-home order until May 18th and signed an order requiring Massachusetts residents to wear masks in public. And you notice it says Republican governor? Well, if you don't know, there is such a thing called rhinos. Republican in name only, but are true devil Democrats. Then you need to wake up, folks. No, most of the Republicans are not rhinos. No, they're not. Boom, Sidney Powell drops a bomb. Comey and company prosecuted Flynn so he and Trump would not expose their crimes. Very true. That's why they had to take down Flynn. Flynn was first key part of insurance policy. I remember when Flynn first got taken down by them. Three years ago, in January of 2017, I said, Flynn's a great guy. This is horrible what they're doing. That was my first instinct. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. On Sunday, General Michael Flynn's attorney, Sidney Powell, joined Joel Pollock on Breitbart News Sunday to discuss the latest revelations in the Flynn case. 
Sidney Powell told Breitbart News that former FBI Director James Comey and other senior officials in the Obama administration likely committed federal crimes in their use of lawfare against former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and President Donald Trump. But wait a minute. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Trey Gowdy said just two days ago that I don't think they broke any laws. Trey Gowdy is a true conservative, standing up for justice, speaks the truth. No, he doesn't. No, no, no. He's, he's just like Lindsey Graham. He's just like Turkey Neck McConnell. Same thing, obstruction of justice, rhinos. That's all they are. Put him in the same bucket with Christopher Ray, James Comey, Eric Clapper, Brennan. General Flynn's initial law firm Covington and Burling defies court requests resist turning over Eric Holder phone records on Flynn case. There you go. Now we have a law firm. Did you ever think that the law firms are conservative? You would be wrong as well. The deep state isn't everywhere. It is intricate uh, everywhere you go. And for those people who are, are not even in high places, they got most of the peasants sitting around wearing masks. You know, it's funny, I, I just went to Walmart. I like to go to Walmart for lower prices. But at the same time, I also like to see what they're doing. Because I know Walmart's the center for the hub of the New World Order beast system for grocery shopping, okay? So I like to see what's going on. So, you know, now I see here in Georgia, I see that, you know, everyone's got a mask on, they're mandated, right? So I'm talking to the, the, at the lady at the checkout counter, she's wearing her mask, and I said, do you know, many zero, you know how many COVID deaths are in this county? She says, no. I said, zero. I went like that zero. You know how many COVID supposed people have COVID-19 in this county? 37. But it was 45. How did it go from 45 to 37? I don't know. I don't watch news. Now, I could have been really controversial. I said, you don't watch news, but you're wearing a mask. Oh, I know. You come to work and for some reason they came, they told you to wear a mask for no reason. And you only believe your co-workers and your boss that tells you to wear a mask and you know nothing about COVID-19. No, what she's doing is she's lying to me and saying, no, I don't discuss political things while I'm on the job. <laughs> That's what she's doing. She's just lying to me, okay? And telling me I don't listen to news, let alone state-run propaganda or true news, right? No. I mean, think about it. If, if you know that so many people are being persecuted for thinking and using their brain, uh, how many people died in this state or this county really of COVID-19? And really research it. And you find that there's hardly nobody. And then you look at all the pneumonia and influenza and we've never shut down the economy for that. Wouldn't that make you kind of mad? But then you also see the persecution on anyone who calls out that truth, don't you? Yeah, you see it, don't you? So if you're scared of the system, you're not going to do it. You're going to be a, a, a human AI, artificial intelligence, and just go along with the plan. That's what she's doing. I don't watch the news from the lady behind the counter checking me out at Walmart? You're an emphatic liar. And, and besides that, she's like 55, 60 years old. How many 55, 60 year olds don't watch news in a pandemic? Can you find any? Actually, let me put it this way. Who was mowing the lawn for Trump at the White House? A little 10 year old. But he doesn't watch fake news or support Trump, even though he emphatically loved it. 
He loved working for Trump, but he doesn't watch any fake news. It, the, truth, the, the truth here is that this great America awakening is more young people are watching the news more than ever. When I was a kid, watching the news was boring. Are you serious? I don't want to watch news. That's Dad, will you turn a channel? I want to watch some cartoons. I want to watch the funnies. I want to watch, you know, whatever is funny on TV. I don't want to watch news. That's boring. But see, the world is changing. Now we have everyone watching news. But the lady behind the counter tells me, I don't watch news. Check the data. Nobel Prize winning scientist says strict lockdowns for COVID-19 were an overreaction. You think? Professor Michael Levitt, who won the 2013 Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2013, uh-oh, he used his brain, didn't he? Says the lockdowns ordered by state governors were a complete overreaction to COVID-19 and may actually backfire. I think that the backfire hit a long time ago when we closed down the economy, huh? By now, you've heard the term herd immunity, which means that many people are exposed to a virus, build antibodies, and then enjoy immunity. That's right. That's how society continues to function. The worst thing you can do is actually separate. You need to stay in the herd. Despite endless viruses popping up from time to time, Levitt, who teaches structural biology at the Stanford School of Medicine, has been analyzing the COVID-19 outbreak from a statistical perspective ever since January, according to unheard.com. He says that despite all the predictions, the data shows that the COVID-19 outbreak never actually grew exponentially, which means the draconian lockdown measures were most likely unnecessary. Oh, check this one out. South Carolina woman arrested for licking spree in grocery store and sandwich spot, shop, excuse me. It's another white libtard. Oh, no, it's a woman of color. Once you go black, you never go back. Shanir Gibson Holiday, Sumter County Sheriff's Office. Shanir Gibson Holiday was arrested on Saturday after a licking spree at an IGA grocery store in Substation 2 sandwich shop in Sumter, South Carolina. Sumter police said surveillance footage from IGA grocery store showed Holiday licking her hands before touching freezer doors and food. She was trying to spread the coronavirus. What a joke, huh? Caught on videotape in a surveillance camera, she promises that she's coming back. In a separate incident, a manager of Substation 2 Sandwich Shop said Holiday was seen licking her hands when wiping the debit card machine and countertops. Holiday was charged with aggravated breach of peace and food tampering and is being held on a $100,000 bond. That means she has got to pay the bondsman $12,000. Usually it's 10 to 12%. Okay. What a joke. Check this one out. Um, she's being held at a detention center, a $100,000 bond. Uh, deputy said the woman exited the store before the workers were done making her food and told them she will be back. Deputies did not find her at the shop when they arrived after that incident. So it doesn't say where she was arrested. My guess. She was caught on surveillance camera and they went to her house. They found out where she lived. I guess that one kind of bit her in the rear end, huh? Awful Chicago Tribune labels all of the open Illinois protesters Nazis in first line of news report after Friday rally. Well, we heard it on CNN by Jake Tapper. There are neo-Nazis just because they are most of them are white, not all, and they are practicing their Second Amendment to bear arms. But here, it's Chicago. See, this is the second city they're doing this, huh? They're branding anyone who wants to go back to work and stop the, the totalitarian dictatorship rules. You are neo-Nazis. The Nazis are calling the people Nazis who are not Nazis. The Democrats have gone crazy now.
the Great America Awakening. The turnout for open Illinois protests dwarfed the communist rally, but they're all a bunch of neo-Nazis. I don't know why the people don't want to see the state open back up, says a black man. Oh, it's not about white or black folks. Skin color means nothing. You will all take the mark of the beast and you will not eat, buy, or sell. Let's move on. A former FDA chief, social distancing didn't work as well as we expected. <laughs> I found this interesting. The idea that people standing six feet apart will fix the pandemic is and always has been silly. And former Food and Drug Administration FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb agrees on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday. Gottlieb said social distancing as well as other mitigation measures imposed by governors don't appear to be working nearly as well as public health experts had projected. When you look across the country, it's really a mixed bag, Gottlieb said. When you back out what's happening in New York around the nation, hospitalizations and new cases continue to rise. There are about 20 states, he says, where we see a rising number of new cases. Yeah, Democrats, Illinois, Texas, Maryland, Indiana, Virginia, North Carolina, Te Tennessee have a lot of new cases on a daily basis, Gottlieb said. That's not, uh, those are not, new cases are not the same as mortality rates, folks. Big difference. In fact, completely big. The commissioner said mitigation efforts make sense, but so far the results are falling well short of what experts were hoping to see. Yeah, experts? Oh, you mean Fossey and Burks, the expert liars. Liberal journalists deliberately mislead over Trump saying he's treated worse than Lincoln. During the Fox 2 News town hall at the Lincoln Memorial on Sunday, President Trump was asked, why do you use descriptive words that can be classified as bullying? And why do you not directly answer the questions asked by the press, but instead speak of past successes and generally ramble? Trump answered, good, I think I like that question. I'm not sure, but I think I like that question. I appreciate it. I appreciate the prayers too. Very, have much. Look, I am greeted with a hostile press, the likes of which no president has ever seen. Very true. The clause, the closest would be that gentleman right up there, he said, gesturing to the statue of Abraham Lincoln behind him. They always said, Lincoln, nobody got treated worse than Lincoln. I believe I am treated worse. You're there. You see those press conferences. They come at me with questions that are disgraceful. To be honest, disgraceful. Their manner of presentation and their words. And if I, I feel that I was kind to them, I would be walked off. I would be walked off the stage. I mean, they come at you with the most horrible, horrendous, biased questions. And you see it 94 to 95% of the press is hostile. Hey, it's the same numbers Pretty much the same as big tech censoring all of conservative news, huh? You see, it's the rise of the beast. It's God's will. It's not going to stop. Trump's not going to fix it either. That'd be against God's will. He's very true here. But, you know, this, this uh, Lincoln Memorial... Uh, d uh, discussion here that he had with Fox News with Brett Baer and Martha McCallum who are anti-Trump. It figures they would ask a dumb question like that. Biden calls coronavirus an incredible opportunity to fundamentally transform the country. We must not let a good disaster go to waste. Now, if Trump said this, I wonder what the left would say. You are evil. This was frightening. Joe Biden on Monday called the coronavirus an incredible opportunity to fundamentally transform the country into communist China, who I've worked with and made many billions of dollars off the poor people of China. But the communist thugs have paid me billions. Oh, I don't know. Maybe his son got 1.5 billion. Oh, don't say the truth, Jim. 1.5 billion, not million. Didn't Barack Obama say the thing, same thing about fundamentally transforming America? 
No, we don't need to hear the truth. And by fundamental transformation, Biden means transforming the U.S. into a socialist hellhole. Socialist? It's far worse than socialists and communists. Actually, it's the beast system. We're going to get rid of all the Jews and the Christians and Christ followers and make sure that Islam rises to the top because they will be beheading them. And if you don't believe that, then you don't know God's word, folks. He says, if we do this right, we have an incredible opportunity to not just dig out of this crisis, but to fundamentally transform the country and the world, said Biden during an appearance to the Lulak Virtual Town Hall. NYPD Union says officers should stop enforcing social distancing order calls city leaders cowards. Wait a minute, most of the unions are liberal. The Democrats, liberal unions. Well, this one obviously is not as liberal as we thought, huh? They finally had enough of the dictatorship murdering innocent people, senior citizens in nursing homes. The Big Apple, the good people of the Big Apple are fighting back. The Police Benevolent Association of the City of New York, NYCPBA, has called for officers to stop enforcing social distancing orders, saying that politicians have left them hanging to deal with the backlash on their own. You think? The union called city leaders cowards. Uh, that's not Mayor de Blasio, is it? Who have left the police to fend for themselves. I don't know. Just because he let all the crazy thugs out of prison doesn't mean the police are fending for themselves as they arrest people for not obeying social distancing, but let everyone go for all crimes. There's no bail in New York, folks. If you're arrested for a crime, it doesn't matter what the crime is. There's no bail. You just get out. There is no truth. There is no fear of God in the land. And so blood's going to break out with blood. It's going to start in the Big Apple and California. Quote, the NYPD needs to get cops out of the social distancing enforcement business altogether, PBA President Patrick Lynch said in a statement. The cowards who run this city have given us nothing but vague guidelines and mixed messages, leaving the cops on the street corners to fend for ourselves. We still got a lot more news, folks. It's only, I know it's only an hour. We got a lot more. Must see Park Ranger shoved into the lake after lecturing young Texans on appropriate social distancing practices. This is funny. You got to see this. He's being a nice guy. I got you, man. So, what do you have there? You have you have young kids, Generation X, teenagers, and what are they doing? They're disrespecting their elders. That's right. There is no respect for the law anywhere. So they just throw them in the water, fending for themselves everywhere. That's right. Brainwashed kids with a Jesuit curriculum, not respect elders, don't obey mother and father, report your mothers and fathers for spanking you, and we will take you out, and then we will send you to another location, a foster parent who is a sodomite and who will rape and use you as their sex slave. And we will cover that too. And they will never go to prison either. Judicial Watch, deep state Pentagon official who likely leaked Flynn's calls with Russian ambassador to Washington Post has been exposed. 
Conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch doing the heavy lifting once again released 143 pages of documents from the U.S. Department of Defense showing communications between the Pentagon's director of the Office of Net Assessment, James Baker, and Washington Post reporter David Ignatius. Recall General Flynn's December 2016 phone calls with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak were leaked to WAPO reporter David Ignatius. Flynn's leaked calls were then published by WAPO on January 12, 2017, which led to Flynn being fired as National Security Advisor in February of 2017. Hmm. WAPO is owned by Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, who has had a $600,000 paid contract with the deep state. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm hmm The corruption never stops. They're calling on it. Will there be any justice over it? I don't think so. Trump goes there, slams vocal critic Psycho Joe Scarborough, and calls for investigation on his dead former intern? Ouch. He tweets, I must admit that lying Brian Williams is, while dumber than hell, quite a bit smarter than fake news seen in anchorman Don Lemon, the dumbest man on television, who says that Michelle Obama is better looking than Melania Trump. <laughs> then you have Psycho Joe, whatever happened to your girlfriend, Scarborough, another of the low IQ individuals. Well, if you know anything about Psycho Joe's wife, I uh, forgot her name, um, works with him there on the Joe Scarborough show or whatever. Uh, uh, what's her name? Brit, I'm trying to remember her name. Brit, uh, Brzezinski. Okay. She, after went, she actually went after Trump first. Joe Scarborough is taking second dibs from Trump on uh, Brzezinski, his, uh, that's her last name. I forgot her first name, but okay. Now then this, this line, uh, this psycho Joe had a past girlfriend and Trump is now calling out Joe Scarbo and took it a step further. He called on Comcast to open up a long overdue Florida cold case against psycho Joe Scarbo. Whatever happened to her? Is she dead? I don't know. Comcast should open up a long overdue Florida cold case against psycho Joe Scarborough. I know him and crazy Mika, that's her name, Mika Brzezinski, well used them beautifully in the last election, dumped them nicely, and will state on the record that he is nuts besides bad ratings. <laughs> More truth from Cyrus. Committee to draft Michelle Obama as vice president has registered with FEC. Once you go black, you never go back, says Michael Obama. She's better looking than Melania, you know. You need to believe Don Lemon. My God. Old Joe pedophile Biden is better looking than Michelle Obama, if you ask me. Yes, I just compared a man to a woman. Sick, but it's true. Dr. Burks says anti-lockdown freedom protesters in Michigan are devastatingly worrisome. That's because that's because Jake Taffer said that they're neo-Nazis. It's worrisome because they are protesting against our dictatorship lockdowns to destroy America's economy. Thousands of freedom protesters converge on Michigan Capitol in Lansing in late April, April to protest Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who supports Joe Biden, and her tyrannical orders during the state economic lockdown. Seeds were not allowed to sell for during the April planting season, the most critical month to buy seeds and to plant. On Sunday, Chris Wallace asked Dr. Deborah Burks about the anti-lockdown protesters. It's devastatingly worrisome. 
to me personally, because if they go home and affect their grandmothers or grandfathers who have a comorbid condition or they have a serious or unfortunate outcome, they will feel guilty for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Wayne Root, is it a time for a revolution? It was George, General George Washington who said, quote, if you want peace, prepare for war. It's time for America's business owners to fight back versus the tyrannical government. Some might call that a revolution, but in this case, I'm talking about a war fought in the courts. I'm talking about a legal battle. It's time for lawsuits, lots of them. Well, let's see how many judges did uh, federal judges did Trump bring in? Hundreds of them. It's time to defend our civil rights. It's time to defend our property rights. It's time to make tyrant governors understand this isn't a dictatorship and we're not your serfs. Good read there. You should check it out, but we must move on. Former AWOL Attorney General Jeff Sessions says, what happened to General Flynn should never happen again, but he did nothing to stop it. Wait a minute, did he just steal that quote from Donald Trump who fired him? Zero indictments of the deep state. Just like A.G. Barr right now. They both have the same record. I'm sorry, Barr, but when are we going to see something? Jeff Sessions was sworn in on February 19, 2017 as the 87th Attorney General of the United States. Less than a month later, on March 2, 2017, A.G. Jeff Sessions recused himself from all the bogus Russian investigations. Let's see, basically, you said, I disavow working with you, Trump. That's what you did. That's what you did when you recused yourself from all the bogus. Bogus? It's called a coup d'etat of Trump administration, an overthrow. I will not stop it. Sessions betrayed President Trump and betrayed the nation and opened up the country to over two years of a criminal and corrupt witch hunt of the 45th president of the United States, where we had to spend $35 million approximately of taxpayer money to do it. Yes, you got to pay for that, folks. Jeff Sessions should have resigned as attorney general, but instead allowed the president, his family, his campaign, his transition team, innocent men and women, and the nation to be steamrolled for over two years by a criminal cabal. Sick. And now he steals Trump's... What, have ha what has happened? What has happened to uh, General Flynn should not happen to anyone again. Stunning Pelosi blocks the investigation of China and origins of Wuhan virus, puts all resources into another hoax investigation of Donald Trump. And boy, what a hoax this one's going to be. Nancy Pelosi is not interested in with finding the origins of the Wuhan virus that is decimating the U.S. economy and has killed 60,000 elderly and sickly Americans, but she will do an investigation over Trump because we're going to blame Trump on the Wuhan virus. Okay. The woman is pure evil while she wears her pink mask. It's sort of like the pink hats, pea hats. Remember that rally where a bunch of women with pea hats came? Sickening. Fossey lied. The economy died. 370 workers at Missouri pork plant test positive for coronavirus. All are asymptomatic. Yes, they indeed did lie. More than 370 workers tested positive at the Triumph Foods Pork Plant near St. Joseph, Missouri this past week. All of them were asymptomatic with the disease. Have you ever heard of a virus that is asymptomatic? Could that mean that it was man-made? That, that's like the key signature it was man-made and most of it failed. <laughs> this proves once again that the virus is much less dangerous than what the experts were saying. 17% of the employees tested positive with no symptoms. That's zero, folks. And no wonder why you hardly have any food in your stores. Any food? 
anything of anything. All the aisles of all the all the aisles of Walmart and everywhere are are vacant of most products. It's just it's not it's just because toilet paper is worse than others. They're all bad. They're all bad. I looked everywhere. I think there was only a couple of aisles that were not shy of of being stocked fully. Maybe a couple, maybe 2% of Walmart, almost everywhere is because people are not working to build these things anymore. Wicked, hashtag never Trump group releases morning in America to trash President Trump during worst pandemic in a century. The discussing Never Trump Lincoln Project released a new ad today in the midst of the worst pandemic to hit America in a century. These self-described Republicans released one of the most horrible Trump-hating ads of the year so far. The leftist group is led by prominent Trump haters George Conway, Steve Schmidt, and Rick Wilson. Truly a who's who of Never Trump losers. You can read more about these Trump haters here if you want. There's mourning in America. Today, more than 60,000 Americans have died from a deadly virus Donald Trump ignored. With the economy in shambles, more than 26 million Americans are out of work. The worst economy in decades. Trump bailed out Wall Street, but not Main Street. This afternoon, millions of Americans will apply for unemployment. And with their savings run out, many are giving up hope. Millions worry that a loved one won't survive COVID-19. There's mourning in America. And under the leadership of Donald Trump, our country is weaker and sicker and poorer. And now, America... I know you had to listen to that. It was awful. It makes you want to turn off the TV when you listen to that. I understand that. But I want you to understand where is this coming from. Self-described Republicans. And the rapture happens at the last trump. Yep. God uses one man for his purpose. And, and I'll leave you with this idea here. Look at what, why I report to Gateway Pundit, from Gateway Pundit. Thank you to our readers, commentators, and supporters. April was the Gateway Pundit's best month on record and that's with 97 percent blocking from google youtube all the search including bing search everything you see the great america awakening and this is why i report from gateway pundit other conservative news are not doing half as well the gateway pundit is doing a fantastic job i also like epoch times but still gateway pundit puts out far more fresh new news happening locally in America. Epoch Times is more of an international news, okay? They do great exposés on China and the CCP, but and their commentaries are fantastic, but their live-by-wire news out of the U.S. is not nothing compared to Gateway Pundit. Red State is no work in comparison. I'm sure they are suffering. Okay, they're they're they don't have good. They only copy off, off everyone else. Gateway Pundit is the bomb. Okay, it definitely is the bomb, and the people have spoken, and there it is. Best month on record, even with all the major blocking. Fantastic stuff. Van, fantastic news. So. I will leave you, that's today's news in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be many more Democrats going crazy today, saying all kinds of crazy things, doing their dictator stuff, their governors. But remember, folks, this is all this must come to pass as we enter the time of sorrows because we know as Jesus says, if they hated me, you know they will hate you. Put your full faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the Father who paid for your sins at the cross. Read and study the King James Version Bible 
only. There are other translations in other languages if you don't understand English. And thank you for listening. And most of all, thank all I thank all of those who are supporting my ministry, who are faithful. You touched my heart, and I don't receive hardly nothing. I am a very, very, very frugal person, okay? And I'm waiting for my Social Security uh, to when I reach 62 here in a couple more months. Thank you all. You've touched my hearts. And may the Lord bless you all. Have a great day.